All right, now my last video on this issue. Um, this debate was fun to analyze and was an excellent debate, really enjoyable to think about. I do want to say that I do think Nick Spencer, I maybe was a little hard on Nick Spencer last video. I think his heart's in the right place. I think he wants to serve Christ. I just, <clears throat> I just strongly disagree with his methodology. Okay. I, I'm not, you know, I don't want to be come off as too judgmental. I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I just did not, it wasn't the angle, I lost four words here, it wasn't the angle I would have taken or that I think a Christian should have taken. It's just my opinion. Um, you know, there, we can, you know, agree to disagree on that if, if anyone would disagree. In the last part of the debate, it gets real interesting, all right? And the first thing I want to talk about is this. So you, you have these two looking at slavery. And what Pinker is trying to say is that the Bible supports slavery and that it's the humanists. And he admits that the Quakers in American history had a lot to do with the removal of slavery. But he's just talking about for, on secular grounds, you know, you can clearly see that slavery is wrong. Now, here's what I find fascinating about this. The Apostle Paul in the book of Acts is before the courts. He's finally made it to Rome, just as the prophecy Jesus gave him said. Seemed pretty unlikely he would get to Rome. He'd been trying to get to Rome for a very long time. He says in Romans, he really wanted to go to Rome. Couldn't do it. Here he is. God got him there. Not the way any of us would have wanted to get there, but he got there. And what does he complain about? He just says the thing he would have changed is that he wouldn't be in these chains. Why? Because he was in the chains wrongfully. Now, my question is this. Who was Paul complaining to? Was he complaining to secular ethicists? Quote, unquote. Because that is an oxymoron. Since they're really just ontologists or metaphys metaphysicians, in my opinion. But whatever. Who is he complaining to? He's complaining to the state. You can make a case from Christianity in its relationship with the state about slavery. But Christianity doesn't spend a lot of time dealing with polity. It's not to say there's nothing to be said about it. I'm not saying that. I'm not even saying that I'm providing an airtight argument against secular ethics here. They already have no grounds to prescribe anything. Okay, there's just they can't do it. <clears throat> they can try to weasel their way out and all that and talk about 15 other different things, but they can't do it. And I don't want to spend any more time talking about that. But on this particular issue, you're you're asking. It's sort of like Sam Harris wanting the Bible to predict electronics. Right? You know how shallow that is. Um, <clears throat> now, the issue of slavery is not shallow, of course. But the issue of saying, well, no, 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 the, the way Christianity should have dealt with this issue is directly deal with this issue is shallow. It's it's minor thinking. It's not actually, it's, it's what, I remember my hermeneutics professor talked about this, that you can lead an atheist to the passages. They can even understand, he read commentaries from atheists or their interpretations or eisegesis was spot on but then he read the part of the commentary that said of course all of this is nonsense and he taught us he said you can lead an atheist to the text but you cannot make the atheist think it's significant so don't expect stephen pinker to think it's significant significant because he's not going to but the fact of the matter is paul was making an argument for him to be let out of chains he wanted it to be free, and he was making the argument before the state. How much time should have Acts been spending on slavery after that? By the way, guys, we want to talk to you about slavery, and we want to talk to you about animal rights, and we want to talk to you about, we can pick any number of things. And by the way, where would Pinker go to show that animal rights is less important than human slavery? Oh, he may think animal rights are more important. You see what I'm saying here? You can't get out of the relativism of all this. And yet he talks about progress. Progress? 
when you have sliding scales, you have no concept of progress. Justin Briley did a good job calling him on it. Unfortunately, because he's not the debater, he had to let his arguments go. They weren't real argument, arguments. They weren't very good. I have notes this time, so I can keep things precise. Um, <clears throat> Pinker goes on. Now, this may just, in his defense, might just be a bad example he chose here. But Pinker goes on. He says... <sighs> You know, we come from a common ancestry. This is still about slavery. And he's saying, we have proven that African Americans are just as much human beings as anyone else. And the differences are superficial. And since we come from a common ancestry, it makes no ra rational sense. Makes I'm put, You know, I'm just paraphrasing a lot of this. Uh, it makes no logical sense to see them as being slaves. And then he's like searching for words and he just says, you know, they feel pain too. There are pictures, devastating pictures, of slaves with whip marks on their backs. I, I, now, what's the significance of that? You telling me they didn't know they felt pain? Does Steven Pinker think that slave owners didn't think that African Americans, that black people, didn't feel pain? Now, what would he say to this? He would say, his best defense would say, okay, but any they knew that animals felt pain. Aha, uh -huh. they did, didn't they? So therefore, empathizing about pain does not mean we come from a common ancestry. I think we do come from a common ancestry. But it shows you how shallow his arguments actually are when someone actually looks at them from the periphery. How's that a good argument? I'm not even going to bother with Nick Spencer's response. Uh, if you're interested, go watch it. It's it's fascinating. Very good debate. One of the best ones I've seen. Um, <clears throat> now, in my notes, you may be wondering where the zany professor is. Let me tell you how boss, to use a term from the early 2000s, the zany professor is. He wasn't available today. So look at this printout. Boom. <laughs> Big old font. Zany font. That font is zany, yo. All right. Ending a sentence with yo is late 90s. I know that for a fact. All right. And I'll get, I'll get the zany professor to come here and defend me. Um, all right. So he concludes that as society gets more comfortable and wealthy, it loses the need for God. And I put, funny, it would seem that Jesus already said that. Camel through the eye of a needle. What kind of argument is this? You know, as societies get more... Of course, he's arguing for what? Progress, right? As societies progress more, they see they don't need God as much. I will take you back again, as we conclude, to Romans. A debased mind. Is he saying he's stupid? No. His starting point is false. His starting point is shallow. It's short. And so all interpretations after are going to be debased. <laughs>